Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I've got Dr. Ian O'Neill here with me today. Hello, Thank astrophysicist, you, awesome guy. I am Trace. This is a show, uh, video podcast style, where we take a big topic, we break it down over the course of a week. This week, aliens. It's been awesome so far. It's about to get more crazy. It's gonna get weird. It's gonna get weird. Right? What if we're all aliens, guys? What if we're all aliens right now? Well, you, you are. me, everybody. I know you are, Trace. Okay, okay, let's not, let's not. There's a theory out there, it's called panspermia, mm -hmm. which is essentially that an asteroid had on it some genetic material or some microbes perhaps, and they fell to Earth on that asteroid and then flourished. Possibly. Right? That's one of it. Is that, is that it in a nutshell? Yeah, so you can, yeah, you can assume that life is like a... Box of chocolates. Box of chocolates or pollen. Okay, pollen. So spreading from planet to planet like, you know, beautiful flowers. Okay. And from each planet, they start having life that flourishes. So the idea, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, theories about how life formed on Earth, and there's a lot of mysteries surrounding that still. Mm -hmm. But one of the ideas could be that perhaps the genetic material or some kind of component of genetic material traveled here via asteroid impacts on another world mm. and then traveled here. But vice versa, perhaps... Our life on Earth, perhaps we are the start of all life. Perhaps the asteroid impact sent little bits, little chunks of Earth to other planets in the solar system and other moons in the solar system and perhaps okay. spawned life there. Wow. And we know that there's rocks from Mars on Earth. We've actually found huh? it. Yeah, I mean, this is actually called, it's got a funky name, where little chunks of planet travel to other planets. It's called lithopanspermia, where okay. like chunks of other planets land on other ones, and it could actually spawn life there. So it's kind of cool when yeah. you think about it. You uh, know, yeah. li life is being spread all over the place, and we've got no evidence is it of this that yet. easy? Is it easy to spread life like that, though? I mean, could Martian bacteria, for example, have somehow made it to Earth? I mean... The, Let's not talk about the actual, mm. you know, astronomical odds of that yeah. happening. You know, the right thing hitting the right thing at the right time, picking up life that survived through space and happened to hit Earth, which is not an easy thing to do. And it's in, and then it lived here. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? We don't know. Oh, it's, it's a theory. I mean, it's, yeah. it's hypothesis. There's right. no real. There's no evidence of that but we do know that uh, the chunks of rock from other planets have traveled to other planets we know this this mm -hmm. has happened um i mean obviously it's a bit easier for like a small world like mars to lose material because it's got a lower gravitational field so if it got hit by an asteroid of the same size of one hitting earth there'll be more material from mars spreading throughout the solar system than earth because mm -hmm. earth's got a larger gravitational field than right. than the mars but then again, all you need is like that one chunk to come off of Earth and perhaps land on Mars. We haven't actually found a chunk of Earth on Mars yet right. that we know of. We haven't really been looking. We well, yeah, we have I mean, been that looking long yeah. in that many places. And and each planet's got their own little spectroscopic. Um, you can do your own analysis on rocks on other planets and work out which planet they came from. Hmm. So there's a certain type of uh, Mars uh, meteorite that we know comes from Mars. And we have some of that here. We have. We and have. It, They're it very just, rare and it's very. Just here. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And and the good thing is you can and by by looking at the um the the content of gas inside that rock you can actually work out when it was blasted from Mars sure which epoch it came from wow so kind of cool. it, let's say we found a Mars a Mars meteorite I guess it would be then what would happen then it, it, we would have to test it somehow we have to find microbes on it if that happened then we could mm -hmm. see if they were related to us. Yeah, I mean, like back in was it ninety five? Uh, the famous uh, speech by President Clinton yeah. um, announced to the whole of America that they discovered microbes in a Mars meteorite. I remember that. That is still we still don't know what those those things were. They're like little flexi worms, but very 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 small. So they would have been um, very tiny cellular organisms or some sort of bacteria. Right. But. Of not of any kind we've ever found on Earth because they're just too tiny. Yeah. But we still haven't got an explanation for it. I mean, there's a lot of theories flying around. Yeah, they around. were debunked as microbes. They've been debunked many times. But it was like, but it could have been something. But I mean, but it could have been something. Yeah, it could have been something. And the thing is, we're still trying to understand what something that is. And of course, now since that big discovery, a lot of space organizations like NASA are very careful about pulling the life card because. Yeah that's a very politically sensitive thing to be saying, oh, we found life, and yeah. actually it's not really life. Right. How long then, we mentioned way back in the, f the first bit, 
of this. We talked about uh, the tardigrade. Yep. And it, it's a microbe that can live in space. How long can microbes live in space? It depends on the shielding. Okay. It completely depends on the shielding. So say if you've got a rock that's been kicked up into space and it is um, shielded against UV uh, radiation, and the space is covered in that stuff, if it's shielded, it can conceivably last a very long time. I mean, there's no um, real study on that yet, but you know, months to years to decades to perhaps mm -hmm. even 100 years, it could mm -hmm. happen, wow. assuming enough shielding. But there is another theory as you know, there's a lot of theories around panspermia. Right. It's called necropanspermia. Sounds and cool. And basically, these life forms don't have to be alive on arrival. They I'm can sorry. be They can be dead on arrival. Dead microbes. Flying through space. That get here. Light years. That get here. Yeah. And what happens then? If they're dead, nothing. Well, and the idea is that their genetic material is used as a template then for other oh. life to latch onto, okay. or at least prebiotic so chemicals like, to form around, and then the spark of life happens. So maybe like the primordial soup yeah. got soup from a stone dropped in it. Yeah, this whole mysterious soup that, that where life all came from that we huh. don't really fully understand yet. That's so, cool. Again, this is all really crazy hypotheses. Yeah, absolutely. But it's kind of fun to think about. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's the best part about aliens. That's the best part about this entire segment that we've been doing about aliens is that there's a lot that we think we know, mm -hmm. and there's a lot that we do know, but none of it's the stuff we want to know. You know, we want to know what aliens look like. We want to know what would happen if they showed up or if we sh if we found them, and we want to know what where we came from and where they would come from, but yeah. we don't know any of it. But it's another interesting thing. We know that like these microbes can hitch rides on um, space robots. So we mm -hmm. know that they can survive in space for a long time. That's why NASA and other space agencies go through great pains to make sure their, uh, their, their instruments are decontaminated. Right. Um, but we already know that colonies of like E. coli can survive in a Martian environment for long periods of time. They don't like breeding much, but they are still alive. Yeah. So if, say, if E. coli gets a hitched a ride on you know, the, the Curiosity Mars lander, for, for example, Hope they not. could still be living there. I they mean, would just we be have hanging, a colony there, just, just hanging out there out. doing their thing. Yeah, I mean, it's cold, high radiation, but yeah. they may not survive. A great, not a great aerobic atmosphere. No, not great. Not aerobic, you know, oxygen. Yeah. They don't like As working anaerobic, out much. Aer yeah. Aerobic, anaerobic. Uh, look it up. It's on yeah. Google. But let's turn this whole thing around, Trace. Say if aliens did it to us. Say if they, they sent their little flask into space of their genetic material, and we evolved from that goo. It just happened to land on this life-giving planet that we call Earth. Okay. Say if we are the experiment. That would explain a lot. It certainly would. It would explain why Think we're all by it. ourselves. Because you're not supposed to mess with experiments okay. once they've started. We're a biological experiment in a little part of an unpopulated part of the galaxy. So my dad used to say when he would come home late at night after work. What did he used to say? He would say that we're aliens. Would he? Yeah. Oh. He, he thought he believed in directed panspermia that we were the result, and he didn't even he didn't even know that word. Yeah. He just thought maybe we were. My dad's weird. I mean, just look at the age of the universe. I mean, yeah. it's it's a logical conclusion to this thought process that we just went through, and we're just these tiny little organisms on this tiny world in a tiny part of the galaxy. All alone, maybe. Yeah. So just imagine hmm. if you're technologically advanced and you've got life, you want to spread it. That's cool. Why not? I mean, that that goes. To, there's a few. Star Trek episodes where they find commonality in mm -hmm. DNA and that's another good thing if we do find life on Mars if we could check out its DNA we could do this paternity test between Mars and Earth light and see and see if they, they are somehow related yeah. but then you have to ask the question how did life transfer from one planet to the other was it panspermia or did something pick it up from one place and put it somewhere I don't else? know I'm going for the, uh, the meteorite idea that's so cool yeah so is life crazy common in the universe what do you think um, I think so, but yeah. that's a personal view. I mean, science can't prove it one way or the other yet. So, yeah. uh, but I, my belief is there's a lot of life-giving chemicals in the universe. There's a lot of planets not too dissimilar to Earth. All the ingredients are there. Why shouldn't there be life? Let's Where are so. these Type Three civilizations? Come on, Type Three, come say hi. No colonies, Flo. No yeah, colonies. no, no, we don't want colonization, not in the. Yeah. So there you have it. This week we talked about: Are we alone? why we haven't found aliens, what we learned from aliens, or what we would see from aliens, rather, and we learned why we might not be ready to meet them yet. And then we talk about whether we are aliens. If you missed any of those episodes, make sure you click, go back and watch some of those. 
And uh, thank you for watching Test 2 Plus. Ian, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. This was you, so Tracy. fun. First guest ever right here, Dr. Ian O'Neill. Go find him on Twitter, at Astro Engine. You can also come find me, at Trace Dominguez. Make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus, and thank you for watching.